Let's be honest, looking polished matters. When you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you do good. It is that simple. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it don't. Sometimes you win some. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're joining me today for this video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Amber. And on this channel, we talk all things personal development, personal growth, wellness, motivation, inspiration, and everything in between. So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to look polished when you live a very busy lifestyle. I know I have a lot of people who have come to this channel from my Simplified 12 Week Year videos. I will link that playlist above so you can definitely check it out if it's something that interests you. But but honestly, if you're interested in the 12 week year, you're probably wanting to get more done in less time than most people do in a year, which means that you really don't have a lot of time to give. And I am right there with you. I completely understand. While this year I've been really focused on like trying to simplify my life, make things a lot simpler, smoother, and easier. The reality is sometimes we are just too busy, but I don't want you to get so busy that you neglect yourself and that you don't put forth the effort to look nice and look your absolute best every single day or at least as often as possible. So if you are not new, you've seen my content before, you know on this channel we are all about simplicity. So today I'm going to focus on three specific categories that you can really pay some extra attention to in order to elevate your looks and to also make sure that you're looking polished every single day. And then also on the other side, we're gonna be talking about three tips in order to actually do so. How can you incorporate time into your daily routine to make sure that you're pouring back into yourself and that you're taking some time to just really think about how you look, how you present yourself, and the confidence that you wanna feel on a regular basis. So let's go ahead and get started. So before we get into the categories, I wanted to start off with the three different tips that you can do to make sure that looking polished on a regular basis is something that is possible and attainable for you. I remember when I worked as a teacher and I used to work for an after school enrichment program, sometimes, which was like rarely, but whenever I was let free into the real world, I would go like pick up lunch at Chipotle or something and I would just see a woman who looked so nice and put together, like her outfit was great, her hair and makeup were great, she had a cute little shoe was on and she just looked like she put so much effort into her look for the day but also at the same time it was effortless and I was like wow like I'm here just looking a complete mess like honestly at that time I was so go 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 that I really didn't take a moment to make sure that I look good like I look back on pictures now and I'm like girl what were you doing where were you going why were you leaving the house looking like that like that is not something I would ever do now, but also I had to get to a point in my life where I was like, no, how I look, how I present myself, looking polished is really important to me. And I can promise you it has literally changed my life and hopefully the tips that I'm sharing with you today in this video will change your life as well. So the first tip is scheduling time. If you're going to be scheduling your doctor's appointments or if you're going to be scheduling when you're going to cook dinner or when you're going to be doing things around the house or when you're going to be going to work, why are you also not scheduling the prep time that goes into helping you look your absolute best and helping you feel really confident and help you look as polished as possible? So that may mean that you have to adjust your schedule just a little bit. Does that look like getting up a little bit earlier in the morning or maybe going to bed a little bit later in the evening? Or structuring your day in a way that allows you to have specific time set aside for really taking care of yourself. So for example, one of the things that I just started doing initially to get into the habit or idea of looking polished was laying out my clothes at nighttime. And I'm not saying like I would stay up super late. Honestly, I would take about 30 extra minutes at night. I would really focus on my skincare so my skin could be nice, smooth, which would make makeup application really simple and easy and smooth as well. And then also I would lay out my outfit so I would know exactly what I'm gonna be wearing the next day so I can get up, put it on and head out the door and not have to stand in my closet thinking like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to wear? Feeling overwhelmed and just throwing on anything, which honestly back in the day was like t-shirt and leggings. We're not talking about it. Um, so now I'm just like, okay, I well, I'm gonna get to that tip later. 
about keeping those things out of your closet in the first place but also like just that extra 30 minutes really allowed me the time to be able to set myself up for success for the next day so that pulling out a really simple easy polished outfit was something that was easy for me and it just became a part of my evening or my nightly routine I knew that I was going to set up what I was going to wear the next day especially because I also worked outside of the home at that point and so it's like with a commute I get it trust me I understand especially for those of you who are in larger cities we're gonna turn traffic it's not easy to set aside that extra time in the morning so think about setting it aside at night and see if that can make an impact and you actually having the time to focus on yourself and how you want to look my second tip is to do a deep dive into Pinterest girl Pinterest is your friend I just went through and cleaned up all my boards because I have some old fashioned stuff on there that I'm like, we're not wearing that anymore. Um, but honestly, like that's where I get a lot of my inspiration. I will look at a picture and say, wow, that girl looks really nice. She looks really chic. She looks very polished and put together. I feel like that's something I could wear. I feel like that's something that I could pull off. And so I just incorporate that into my own personal wardrobe. No, I'm not buying every single thing that I see on Pinterest or every single thing that I see an influencer link on Instagram. However, I can get inspiration. So y'all know I'm a big thrift girl. So if I go thrift shopping, I have a list in my phone of like wardrobe, staples, outfit things that I want. Like right now I'm looking for a very white crisp button down. Also some like colorful button downs, like maybe a buttery yellow and a striped button down for the spring. So they're on my list so that when I am shopping, I know what I'm looking for and I don't end up buying things that I don't need or that I don't want or that are not going to fit into the wardrobe that I'm trying to build and create for myself. So go on Pinterest, get some inspiration, start making a little list, notes in your phone of different things that you can wear, some different ideas for outfits, and just figure out what works for you and then build your wardrobe around that but there's so much inspiration out there on Pinterest just dive into it and honestly your feed will really adapt to what you're looking for so lately I've been trying to find like more capsule wardrobe neutral items that I could mix and match for travel and now that's pretty much what my feed always is and so I'm constantly getting new ideas new inspiration finding new stores new places to shop and just overall like keeping that excitement and idea of what I want my personal style to be at the forefront of my mind and tip number three, which I kind of alluded to earlier, is do not keep things that don't suit you. Like you will not find a tacky, raggedy, rundown, probably stained t-shirt anywhere in my closet or in my drawers because I don't have that anymore. Also with a lot of times when I worked for the after school program, I was like very busy. I was up and down a lot. So I would just pop on leggings with a t-shirt. Leggings are not pants. So why was I wearing leggings with a t-shirt to work? Like I understand like that was kind of the field that I was in, but at the same time, there are so many other things that I could have worn in order to elevate my look and really incorporate more style and more professionalism into my outfits. So I just get rid of all of that stuff. I don't have any like cheapy leggings or anything to grab when I'm trying to think of what to put on so it makes it so much easier. My go-to lately has been matching sets. So I will literally have them all organized in my closet. So if I'm like, oh, I don't know what to wear, what do I grab, what do I put on? If I didn't have time to plan ahead, go grab a matching set. It's nice and easy and it's right there. So you don't see the tempting items that you've always gone back to. Like I personally have never been a jeans person. I just feel like they're very uncomfortable, but a lot of people are like t-shirt and jeans. Nothing at all wrong with t-shirt and jeans, but how are you wearing your t-shirt and jeans? Do they fit you well? Are you accessorizing with a belt? Maybe popping on a jacket or a blazer to give it a bit of a style. There are so many different things that you can do with just simple, basic outfits, but anything that's old, raggedy, run down, has like fuzzy balls or any of that kind of stuff on it, throw it out. I want you to think about dedicating some time to just going through your closet and really getting rid of items that don't suit you and that you don't want to gravitate towards or grab on a regular basis. Even things as far as like that don't fit really well. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to get back into this. So let me just keep it. Listen, even if I do get back into it, I'm probably not going to want to wear it at that point in time anyways like my style is changing my style is evolving and that may just be something that doesn't interest me anymore so there's no point in keeping it in the closet hoping to fit back into it dress for where you're at now enjoy your style now and have fun with fashion without forcing yourself to be stuck on those old items that you have let them go
All right, so now that we have covered those three tips, please comment below and let me know which one of those three tips you're gonna try out and which one you found to be the most helpful. I love chit-chatting with you all in the comment section, so drop something down below, even if it's just saying a quick hello. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and move over into the second portion of this video, which are the three main categories that you can focus on to help you look more polished and put together on a daily basis, especially if you are a busy, busy woman. So the first thing that we're gonna be starting with is hair a little side story we have had like crazy crazy weather here we had a weather event called a derecho which has never happened I believe um, in Houston and so literally I was without power for three four days my salon is still without power so of course that meant no hair appointment for me now of course like very small things in the grand scheme of it like I am safe and have everything that I need but I'm also traveling, so it was kind of like, oh no, like, what am I supposed to do? My hair is not done. I went into a little bit of a panic mode because I did have a protective style. I took my braids out, I washed my hair, and prepped it for my appointment, and then it didn't happen. But I was like, you know what, Amber? You're telling the girls that this is what they should do, so you've got to do it too. So I literally got creative and pulled this look together on my own, and I feel pretty comfortable and confident to take it with me on my travels, and then when I get back, I'll get in for my hair appointment. But that is the biggest, biggest thing that I will always stress, is you have to learn how to take care of your hair and how to do some hairstyles on your own. Unfortunately, we cannot always get our hair done. In a perfect world, that would be great and ideal, but in reality, you are gonna have to do your own hair. So I did wanna put y'all on to some of my personal hair tips and tricks and go-tos so that I can make sure that I look polished on a regular basis. So first things first is when I am just like, look, I don't know what to do, you will see me in a slicked bun. I love this gel from As I Am. I mix that with some edge control, brush it down really well, put on some like hydrating mist in my hair, add some oils because I really do want it to be moisturized and make sure that it's not breaking since I'm having it in like a tighter pulled back style and I will do a center part slick my hair back into a bun and move on with the day that is something super easy that you can do at home that can be a very simple go-to now what about protective styles I did learn how to braid my own hair but I'm not always trying to braid my own hair. So the two things that I absolutely love are clip-ins and a U-part wig. This is actually a U-part wig that I have on now. So everything in the middle is my leave out, my actual hair, and then all of this is the wig part of my install. But again, it's super simple. All I have to do is braid my hair down, leave a little bit of hair out in the middle, and clip this on. I sew mine down because I don't want any accidents or wind to take me to the left, but you don't even have to do that. There is enough, there are enough clips, there are enough like little, um, there's like an elastic band. I cut that out of mine, but if you do want it to be secure without having to sew it, a U-part wig is like a sew-in that you can do on your own at home. It's super easy, super simple. I did try my own sew-in. I actually had a video on it from January of last year somewhere on this channel. Um, for me, it didn't last long because I don't really sew or braid down super well. So this has been like a very easy alternative for me. Also my clip-ins, I'll make sure that I link them below as well. I found the perfect clip-ins on Amazon, super affordable, that blend really nicely with my hair. So when I do have my hair down and I want a different look or a little bit more length, I can just pop those clip-ins in. They're seamless, they're beautiful, they're perfect, and they're easy and they're also nice and comfortable and really good for your hair. So while I can't do every single hairstyle and while I can't make sure that I always can get in for an appointment I know that I can still look nice and polished because there are a few things I can do at home especially in the emergency to make sure that I'm still keeping my hair looking nice I feel like hair is like the baseline for looking great and polished if you have your hair just simply done and neat it's going to make a huge difference so put forth a little bit of effort to find a style that you're able to do on your own and then also find things that are your signature look so when i am able to get into a stylist what is that look what does my hair look like am i doing a side part am i doing a center part i usually switch mine up but either way i love like big voluminous waves or sometimes i'll do center part nice and straight and sleek different styles that suit me i have found over time and so i know like these are my go-to's this is what i'm asking for and this is what i am getting done so definitely try to find your signature style when it comes to your hair 
And the second category we have for looking polished on a regular basis for the busy everyday woman is finding a busy girl, everyday girl makeup routine that you are able to do. Again, you are in the land of YouTube. So there are so many resources that you can find for free, but also like just stick with the basics. I would say foundation, concealer, powder, something for your brows and something for your lips. I say don't enter the world without a little bit of blush, so maybe six things that you should put into your regular makeup routine, but it doesn't have to be a lot and it does not have to be overdone. Give yourself time to practice, just like we talked about scheduling time to look polished and to put yourself together. Schedule time to practice makeup, to find a simple routine that you are able to do. Also, another thing when it comes to makeup, I say being high maintenance in order to be low maintenance is definitely the way to go. So I have my own DIY lash extensions, I have my eyebrows microbladed. So if all else fails and I just have to get up and run out the door, at least I can do my skincare and make sure that I look somewhat cute because my lashes are already done and my brows are already done and I'll just pop on a lip gloss and go about my day. So it doesn't have to be this long like okay let me get up and do my lashes every morning or try to do mascara like I have always struggled with mascara so there's not really a point in me even putting that into my routine I don't think I even have mascara anywhere in my makeup kit because it's just not my thing learning to do my own cluster lashes at home was way easier they last me for about five days it's nice and easy and I wake up looking bright eyed and it's just a perfect addition to elevate my look just a little bit so find those things that you want to do that give you a bit more permanence so that when you wake up and you're trying to pull yourself together for the day it doesn't take so much effort to get that polished look but you already look really nice and cute and that's a great foundation to help you get started with looking your best for the day also one more thing i wanted to mention about makeup is finding colors that suit you like a red lip i think is so beautiful and so bold but every red lip does not look good on me so I try to find red lips that are more like brown undertones, a bit more muted, that really complement my skin tone. Also with makeup, I actually love an orange blush over a pink blush for the summer especially because I feel like it brings out my nice golden undertones. So just trying some different things to figure out what works for you is always going to be really helpful. But I would say just keep it nice, keep it neutral, keep it simple, and that is going to help you look great and polished. And lastly, the third category that you should focus on if you want to look polished every single day as a busy woman is your outfit. So a few things that are just general across the board. Make sure that your clothes do not have stains on them, that they look nice, that they are steamed, and that they are tailored to fit your body. I actually just dropped off a dress at the tailor this morning so that when I get back in town, I can run over there and pick it up and make sure that it fits me really, really well. Tailoring your clothes will make such a huge difference Fit is so important and just adding those little extra elements like a belt or a necklace can make a huge impact as well. Also when it comes to outfits, if you want to look polished, you have to dress for your body. If things are ill-fitting and they don't look great on you, you're not going to look good, you're not going to feel good. So really think about your body shape, try out different styles to figure out what works for you. I talked about this in a video recently. I can't remember which video it was, it's somewhere on the channel, but I was basically saying like right now my body is not in a bodycon dress type of place. I am fully a fit and flare girl and I feel like it looks so flattering on me and I know that that's an easy go-to that I can put on and feel really, really good in. I actually heard someone on TikTok share this recently. I'll have to find her name and include her in the description box, but she refers to it as having an outfit formula figuring out what works for you. And I was also, I saw Leah talk about this too in one of her vlogs. She was like, I am such a pant girl, like popping on a top, form fitting and a form fitting pant, like in a heel, that's my look, that's my go-to. For me, it's definitely dresses. I'm fully a dress girl, so I'll put on a cute fit and flare dress with a sandal or a sneaker, slick my hair in a bun or do a big kind of blowout look. That's my go-to outfit formula. And of course, popping on a blazer. I was actually chatting with one of my clients and she was like, girl, like on the YouTube videos, like you are coming with the blazers. And I'm like, you know, I just love it. Like I feel like it adds something different. It dresses up the look a little bit and it adds a touch of elevation. Like this is a super simple jumpsuit and I do like it, but I was like, what can take it to the next level and what can help me feel really comfortable and confident? And for me, that was throwing on a blazer. Now, I like a blazer rather than like a bomber jacket or a leather jacket. 
this fits my style and also my body type way better so just finding the things that work for you find your outfit formula something you can always toss on without fail you know you're going to eat it up look amazing and feel amazing and feel really great and confident and look polished at the same time all right that wraps us up for today's video so i hope you loved the three different tips that i shared and the three different categories that i shared in order to help you look really great and polished and feel your absolute best and really embrace who you are your authenticity and your confidence on a regular basis i promise when you put forth that little bit of effort it's just going to help you feel so so amazing and it's going to in turn help amazing opportunities to come your way and just amazing things to fill your life overall so again, thank you all for watching this video. If you're not part of the community already, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you all so much for being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Please like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Affirmations with Amber.